So today I wanted to talk about e-commerce a little bit and just how much it amazes me uh, that the sides of the spectrum that companies appear to be on. And there, there really is no middle ground that I can see when dealing with e-commerce situations. It really seems like there's two opposite sides of the spectrum and you're either here or you're here. Well, I'm going to explain. So you are either just giving away your products for virtually nothing, offering free shipping, not getting paid until the a buyer receives their item, and then being expected any single time they have anything to bitch about to simply take their balls as deep down your throat as you can and provide the sweetest form of fellatio to them. Otherwise, you have your ability to uh, receive credit card payments revoked from your merchant services provider. Or... You just don't give two shits of a fuck because it's an internet sale and not an in-person sale, so you can just get away with murder and do whatever you want, and nobody cares. And I don't really see the middle ground. Again, it's either one or the other. And my experience about a week ago really kind of reminded me of this. So people have asked me, so I know you don't like eBay. How about Amazon? Why don't you sell on Amazon? I used to sell on Amazon. Let me, let me go over a little bit of how that worked. So there's one guy who lives in California, buys a screen on Wednesday, right? He buys a screen on Wednesday night. It ships Thursday morning. On Saturday, he wants to know where his screen is. Where is my screen? I've uploaded tracking information that says that it will arrive Monday, but clearly he's too dumb to read that. So he... <coughs> Now, usually I answer the emails on the weekend, but this is the one week of the year in about 2012 or 2013 that I decided, you know what? I like to have a regular five-day work week like the rest of the world. I'm not going to answer the emails on the weekend. I will answer them when I get to work at 7.30 on Monday. So he's really, really angry. So on Saturday night, he files an A to Z claim, and then he decides to escalate it. On Sunday, I'm still not reading emails. On Sunday, they decide, you know what, sir? You're correct. You should receive a full refund for the item that you did not receive. He used free shipping. He's in California. I'm in New York. You are 3,000 miles away. And this product, the tracking is uploaded. It's supposed to get to you. And just again, not only did he get his full refund, but that was actually, I think, one or two or three A to Z claims that were like that in a short time period. So Amazon decided to delete my seller account. So what Amazon did is they decided to hold my money for about six or seven months. And it wasn't a lot. It was like maybe, maybe like, well, it couldn't have been more than a thousand bucks or two thousand bucks. I wasn't selling a lot on Amazon at the time. They hold that two thousand bucks just because I shipped the item in a manner in which it will arrive in two and a half business days to somebody who paid for free shipping across the country and did not reply to their bitching, whiny comment on a weekend. Like that is the other spectrum of e-commerce. Where again, the only the only thing that works is to just have that have that laptop in front of me, whether it's three in the afternoon or three in the morning, doesn't matter if it's a business day or not, and just answer every single comment and suck and give them the best fellatio of their life, or else you're screwed. On the other side of it is the experience I had last week. So for this soldering course, uh, you know, if you look at those pictures, there's a lot of money invested in Hacko stations on there good amount. And I figure, you know, I, this is a good time to get my hacko fix. So I've been bitching about the fact that my hot air station hasn't been working the way it used to. And I get myself a new heating element. It's working even worse than it used to. A good amount of that is actually... <laughs> <coughs> And, and that hot air element is just not working the way it used. It, it was working even worse than the one that was originally in there. It was turning itself off all the time. It wasn't getting hot. So I said, you know what? This is a great time to send it to Hacko because I'm not going to be here. I can't work anyway. Let me send it to them. I express mail to them. I send them a letter saying, I know that this thing has been abused and beaten over its last three years of its life. Please just do what you have to do to fix it. I will pay for it. Figure, use the fastest shipping possible. Charge me whatever you want. Just, just get it done. And they sent me an estimate. I'm reading this estimate. It actually makes me laugh. Let me, let me just go over it to show you why this estimate kind of made me laugh. And Jesso is also laughing a lot at this as well. So keep in mind, what I did was I decided to replace the heating element because it wasn't heating. The heat was going off. It's a three-year-old heating element. When I took it out, it looked like crap. Here's what they say. Upon inspection, our technician found the following. Received station with hand, handle holder and 8th 1130 nozzle. Upon inspection, found the handle physically damaged and broken and improperly assembled, causing damage to the heater pipe. Guess who improperly assembled it? <laughs> Mica pipe is deteriorated with a glass pipe broken. Nozzle is used and the jet damage bent. Recommend replacement. Heating element has minimal usage and is within resistance value of a working heater. No replacement needed. So handle mica, glass, nozzle, and heater pipe will be quoted. So pretty much like what I replaced, what I wanted to replace was actually the only fucking thing on there that actually already worked. It was the, the entire rest of the station that was screwed. So we, we kind of found that funny, especially the improperly assembled part. Anyway, so I send it back. 
and uh, it. Anyway, so I send this thing back, and we get, and they, and uh, they send this, they send me the estimate, and I say, go ahead and fix it, and do me a favor and bill me for the fastest shipping that you have to get it back to me. Now, here's the here's the part where where, where the opposite end of the spectrum comes in. So I sent this to you, Express Mail. I'm not saying that I expect you to express it to me back for free because I sent it to you express, but I sent this to you express mail. Then I said, charge me whatever it is that you need to charge me to get this back here as quickly as possible. If overnight is needed or whatever it is, charge me whatever. You would think at that point that you would just common sense would dictate that if a part were back ordered until July 10th, and I'm asking you about this in the middle of, of June, that you might want to tell me that. But, but you didn't until we called over and over again and asked about it. And it's, oh, yeah, the thing that we need to fix your product is on back order until July 10th. And I said, all right. And then Steve walks back here with another pile of crap for me to fix. And I say, well, there's not much I can do until July 10th because I don't have a tool. And he just stares at me. And he, and he asked me why. And he asked me about the conversation. And he asked what happened. And he's like, g- g- give me their phone number. Oh, and by the way, after to add insult to injury, to add like the kick in the balls in that really, that, that got Steve to just go from walking away to saying, give me the number so I can deal with them, was after they told me, oh yeah, I know that you asked for overnight shipping, but that part's not going to be in until July 10th. And we just didn't feel like telling you that until you, want, until you called us. Uh, multiple times to ask about it after we ignored your email asking for information on shipping, which they did. They totally ignored any email I sent them on shipping. Not a, we won't be shipping it out until we get the part. Not we're waiting on the part. Silence! Uh, What they said is, oh, well, that's old. Since that station is older, it's going to be harder to service it and to get parts for it in the future. Maybe you want to look into buying our FR810. Would you like a brochure for our FR810? And I go, how much is it? And they go, 750 bucks. And I'm like, Fuck you! I want you to fix my old one. If you cannot fix my old one, I want you to tell me that you can't fix my old one instead of ignoring me so that I get screwed and you know no no tool to use for several weeks. But like again, like if I tell somebody, hey, we can fix this laptop, and they look at me and they go, okay, but I really need it fast, and then I ignore them. And then a week later they call me to say, hey, I told you I needed my laptop fixed fast, and I go to them, well. We can't fix it for a month because we don't have the screen for it. They are going to kick me in the balls. Now, whether they kick me in the balls or they take a knife and they stab me in the balls is going to be dependent on whether or not I actually try to upsell them on instead of fixing your computer for 100 bucks, of buying a new one for me for $2,000 because we can't fix it in a month. If I tell them, well, I purposely just decided to ignore the fact that I couldn't fix this for a month, they are going to kick me in the balls. But if I tell them, well, I purposely decided not to tell you that we can't fix it for a month because we don't have the part. But, you know, I know I put you in a hard buy in there, but if you want, you could buy this $2,000 phone from me right now. They would have every right to take the sharpest thing right next to them, filled with a poisonous substance, and just stab me right in the nutsack. That's, that's, that's just what I think. And he calls them, and all he really says is, you know, if I were to tell all these people here that we can fix your product, and they look at me and they tell me I need it quickly. Then I decide to omit the fact that there is a two and a half week wait for me to get the part I need for your machine. They're going to murder me. They're going to take this flux syringe with a pointy needle at the end, and they're going to stick this into my eyeball, and then they're going to cram all that all the, until it goes all the way into my brain and rots everything. And they would have every right to. So they have done everything in their power to let me know that this is something they need quickly. Why is it that I would not tell them that there is a two and a half week delay on something? And that's really what it is. It's like you don't have to care because you're not in that whole eBay, Amazon bullshit of where if you don't answer that customer at 3 a.m. when it's not a business day that you're, that you're getting your account deleted. They don't have to give a fuck. They don't have to give a shit because that is traditional e-commerce. And a lot of companies that sell industrial machinery or tools and stuff like that, they're stuck in that whole 1990s, early 2000s e-commerce before it became commonplace that you need to suck the dick of all of your customers and like their asshole in order to in order to stay in business and you know and really it is what like i had a great appreciation for the customer service that we offer that week because again if somebody told me i need this thing as quickly as possible 
I would tell them, oh, well, we're not getting that thing that you need to make this work as quickly as possible up until two and a half weeks. So maybe you can choose, uh, maybe there's a ghetto fix that we can do that may work, that may get you by in the meantime. Maybe I can offer you a machine in our window for sale. Maybe you could simply decide that you don't want to do business with us in that particular instance, even though you like us, because you have a specific requirement that we're not able to meet. Either way, if I provide you with that information, then you can decide what it is you want to do. Now, if I had known when I was sitting back in Jess's class before I came back here that that shit was going to be there until July 10th, maybe, just maybe, I would have asked them, okay, do you have a used station available? I would have asked my friends, hey, can I borrow this? I would have bought another one with next day shipping from a vendor that actually knows that when I say next day shipping, that that means I don't want it a month from now. But no. You and just just fucking silence. And again, if I did that in my store where there's no e-commerce, if I did that in a store, my glass would get broken every single day. People would really, people would be throwing bricks through it. And when he politely explained that to them, they found <laughs> some nozzle on some demo user or some handle on some demo unit, and they used that and they shipped it to me, and I'm happy. But really, why should you have to do that? Why should you have to go through the bullshit and the trouble? And I, I just, I, I don't get it. I don't understand. And when you ask somebody, can you overnight this because we need it fast? I get if you cannot do that. But why would you go, okay, we can do that, and then not tell me that you can't fix it for two and a half weeks? Like, what? what? If I did that to people, they would kick me in the balls. And I know because there are times when I have accidentally inadvertently and felt awful about it, done that to people. And I've, and I've literally, I've stood there and told them, by all means, you just, just, just kick me in the balls. I, I'm, I'm not going to yell at you. I earned it. And, you know, and, that, and, that, and that's just the way that works. Um, I had also emailed them to ask for a tracking number on it. Never heard shit. And, and like, again, I am not a customer that spent 50 bucks with you. I am a customer who for the last three fucking years on every single social media platform has told people to buy Hacko. On Tape Op in 2007, I'm making posts telling people to buy Hacko. On YouTube, I'm showing you how to use the Hacko gear, why to use the Hacko gear, that the Hacko gear is better. The only thing I have not said good about Hacko is that their FM206 station sucks in comparison to another Hacko that works very well because the FR801 has great hot air and the FM206 with the FM2029 is pretty much as, as useless as me blowing with a lighter in front of my mouth. And not to mention that we are doing a course with a room that is filled with at least $10,000 worth of Hacko product that students are then going to like. And they're going to like that Hacko product and go, I worked on that Hacko product. When I go home, they go and buy that Hacko product because we spent that $10,000 on the Hacko product to use it. You'd think that they may be a little bit nicer. But no. So here's what I decided. And this is the other part about e-commerce that just kind of makes me laugh. So after this, I'm, I'm deciding, you know what, let me just see if there's something I can buy with overnight shipping so that Steve does not get his balls cut off by all the customers. So at this point, I'm thinking to myself, let me see if there's another station I can buy with no overnight shipping so that Steve does not get his balls cut off by all these customers. So I go searching and I found this D Weller WSA, I think it's WSA 900 or something like that. I got the I got the name of it wrong, so let's see. It is a WHA 900, Weller WHA 900. And here's, again, here's where the e-commerce shit comes in, like the old school e-commerce with the, the sellers that are, uh, are used to being able to do whatever they want. And again, it's not because they're mean. It's not because they're trying to be mean. That's what I want to get across. It's just a difference in culture and a difference in expectations. So this here is available to buy. This is a Dweller WHA 900 station, and this is actually available with Amazon Prime. And when I saw this, I nearly came my pants. Not only is this a station at a reasonable price, available from a, a good vendor and a reputable online store. So this is being sold by Apex Tool Group, which is the company that owns Weller. It's on Amazon. I trust Amazon more than I trust the website. I don't know. Yes, I can get the free two-day shipping with Amazon Prime. The fact that they even have Amazon Prime means it will ship fast. But but this station does not come with a nozzle. And if you want the nozzle for the station, you got to buy the nozzle from a different seller, even though it's by Apex Tool Group, and that is not going to be delivered until July 9th. So I buy the station with the next day shipping. It arrives tomorrow, but I can't start soldering until next fucking week because you don't have a single vendor that sells that nozzle. Or if I wanted to give you 100 or 200 or $1,000 to overnight that nozzle that I could do it. 
Why? What the fuck? It's just, and, we, and Steve and I just had a really good laugh over all this. The ultimate laugh here is that I thought I had three hot air stations, and I actually have one. So um, I have a 220 volt Hacko FR801 that used to sit on that table that my friend borrowed and actually has in his garage. And since he has been busy working 16-hour work weeks, he has not had time to even come see me for lunch in a month, much less uh, drive home to bring me a station. I had an FX... uh, I had an FR801. That was the one on the desk that I was always using. And I had, I think, an A51 or a 951 that I, I overestimated its ability to remove QFN packages. That thing is just as bad as that FM206-2029 combination that I reviewed before. But yeah, that's the thing with e-commerce. Again, it's like it, 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 there, there are two sides. There are two sides. And you're either, again, you are either, uh, you are able to simply say whatever you want, treat people however you want, do whatever you want, charge back whoever you want, and get away with it as a customer. Or you have no rights, nobody gives a crap about you, you get treated like shit. And it's just, it's just interesting seeing the two different sides of it. And, uh, and that's why I'm personally, in 2015, I have no interest in getting into e-commerce ever again. I really don't have interest in selling parts online. I sell repair services online, but I sell them the way I sell them. I want to treat you as well as humanly possible but within reason. I'm not about to start blowing you and giving you things for free because you feel like this should have been done at 3 p.m. that day, not 3.30 p.m. that day, you understand? And, and, and that, that's really like that, that middle ground is where if it were possible to start an online store today and sell stuff in that middle ground, I'd be very happy. Again, I'm not a fan of that side. I'm not a fan of that side where you're telling people, oh, yeah, I know you want it tomorrow, but I'm going to withhold the information that we're not going to be able to ship that thing for like three weeks. And I'm not really a fan of that whole other side of it, where the customer's just sheer spoiled entitlement is such that I, I want to just throw up in my mouth when I read the emails. And that's about that. But yeah, it is nice to have a good hackle back. I, you know, I can say whatever I want, but when I use another station and then I go and use my FR801, I love my FR801. 